You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. You are listening to the IT and the D Show, and we are still hungover from episode 200, so you know what that means. This is episode 201. Woo. We are recording here live at Podcast Detroit in Royal Oak, Michigan. Uh, guest today, David Hines. He is the uh, proprietor of Valiant Films. Should have a very, very fun conversation. Also, third-time offender Corey Russell's in the house talking four. about four-time. Four. He was at the Russell. He was at the Ferndale studio. Blackfin. The Black when, when we did oh, the Blackfin Live yeah, broadcast, yeah, yeah. and now here, yeah. Corey's in the house talking about Fan World. Should be a fun, fun conversation. So, dumb question, uh, if you're listening to us at least. Uh, do you have internet at home? If you do, then chances are you have a Wi-Fi router. And if you have a Wi-Fi router, that means that cyber criminals can hack into your home Wi-Fi network to access data from your connected personal devices like credit card numbers, private photos, and more. Introducing Norton Core, a secure Wi-Fi router for the connected home. Norton Core discovers connected personal devices, identifies vulnerabilities, and helps secure them. If a device is breached, Norton Core quarantines the threat all on its own. Get the security you need and speed that you want with Norton Core. Go to Norton dot com slash it in the d to save thirty dollars if you pre order before July first. That's Norton dot com slash it in the d. Norton, Norton, Davey, we fire when ready. We're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. The following program is intended for mature audiences. I'm Wyatt. That's Gary. You're Bob, and you're Dave. This is the IT and the D Show. This is Max Mag- Mag- Hedrum. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister-sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. This is Billy D. Williams. Bob and Dave and I are enjoying a Colt 45 right now. And remember, IT in the D, it works every time. Where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come! Shut up! Hi, this is Christy Swanson, and you're listening to the IT in the D Show. And Bob and Dave touch my hoo-hoos. So what happens when you tap the angry beaver in the bunghole? <laughs> exactly. Come on. Christ. <laughs> what the hell with this? I'm calling a break. We'll come back to the show. Uh, this is Gil Foyle from Silicon Valley, and the only two guys I hate more than Dinesh are Bob and Dave. Suck it, guys. Push your finger. What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT and the D Show. No mercy. I may have to wipe the deep off. Hi, this is Kelly LeBrock from Weird Science. So, Bob and Dave, what would you little maniacs like to do first? Are we at a break yet? <laughs> hey, this is Zach McGowan from Planet Earth. You're listening to IT and the D Show. Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT and the D. All you nerds out there. Nerds, nerds, nerds. What is a nerd? I'm a nerd, and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Hey, Detroit, this is Anthony and Michael Hall. You're listening to my buddies Bob and Dave on IT in the D. This is Scott Stein, a big pump pump. The IT in the D show is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. You're yeah, in your underwear? I'm in my underwear. Hey, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I <laughs> definitely want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. Hey, everybody. This is Tony Todd. What's happening? You may know me from Candyman, The Rock, Sushi Girls, Zoom, Night Living Dead, a lot of pop culture media madness. Anyway, you're listening to IT in the D show business. I'm totally into Dave, but not right. so much Bob. This is Robert Hayes, the Ted Stryker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at the McGumbo Bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat steak. Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you're listening to the IT and the D show. Tough guy. Oh! So... What would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Sir, had you better buckle up? Now ah, buckle this! Ludicrous speed! Go!
Welcome back. Thank you for listening. This is the one and only IT in the D show, and we have made it all the way to episode 201. It's, uh, it's really that's, awkward to that's say. That's what happens the week after, after 200. 200. Yeah. And we goes. are broadcasting <laughs> live here in Studio One in Podcast Detroit in beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. I almost forgot where we were. This is Bob the Sales <laughs> it's Guy. That, uh, that, uh, that malt liquor drink you're uh, drinking over there. It might have you a little befuddled. We're, del- we're enjoying a de- delicious, <laughs> the refreshing citrus beverage known as Zima. Um, <laughs> because it's bad. I'm Bob the Sales Guy. That's Dave the Geek. Nuri the FNG is back from Burning Man and he li- alive to tell the tale. The regional, and it's kind of barely back. So uh, as you can hear by <laughs> my voice. He's physically nice. present. Mentally remains to be seen. You right. sound like the seventy-year-old auntie that's been smoking for like forty-seven <laughs> Dude, years. I've been yelling at hippies all week. I mean, come on, <laughs> Bob, Rand- hand me my Virginia Slims. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, I do the Twitter's Walker is also in the studio. Find us online, it in the D dot com, and uh, subscribe to us uh, on our and follow us on all our socials and subscribe to us everywhere. Fine, fine podcasts, podcasts are sold. Yes. So, hey, this episode... Oh, and, and actually, speaking of which, I did make sure uh, we've got both us and the entire network out on Podbean, Acast. I, I think I submitted us to, like, 12 new directories. Are we on iHeartRadio yet? Uh, no, that's about a two-week process, and that just started last week, so we're getting there. Got it. Because I want to, yeah... I want I hurt really. Exactly. This segment's brought to you by our good <laughs> friends at the Dollar Shave Club. It's time to step up your routine with an incredible game changing shave from Dollar Shave Club. And I am the first one to, to admit that they have when I order I ordered Have this, you made it to your second blade yet? No, I have not. I am still on Blade One. Um not Wesley Snipes. I'm still on <laughs> Blade One from a month ago. Hey, no Blade Runner. No, and I still you know, granted I have a goatee and sideburns, but I still, you know, uh, it's tough to shave. Shave her clothes for you kiss her. Get yeah, out. totally. And uh, I'm still on Blade One. These are the best blades I've ever bought. I'm talking the expensive ones, too. Um, well worth every single penny. And guess what? Um, for a limited time, you can get your first month. Uh, and they say four blades is a month. I, I think they're lying. Um you get their first month of the exec- executive razor with a tube of their shea butter for five bucks free shipping. After that, razors are a few bucks a month. Fifteen dollar value for five bucks. You get a nice handle, a full cassette of four cartridges, tube of shave butter. Do us a favor, go to dollarshaveclub.com slash IT in the D altogether. That's, That's dollar dollar shave club. Club. Dot com slash IT in the D. Nice airplane reset there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing something, but you know, all go, together. Go home and watch airplane. You'll, you'll get it. It's too. a totally different experience. It's just all a together. pilot. <laughs> it's just, just a pilot, though. <laughs> it is. Anyway. So we did. We survived uh, episode 200. We survived the chaos and mayhem following episode 200. It sucks that I missed it. I was like, of all the things to miss from my two years on the show now, there were episode 200. It was all the drinking. Uh, we, we went down the street to Selena's and, right. and had ourselves a fine little time. Nice. <laughs> nice. If we want to jump into the, I guess, the mother of all data breaches. Well, so uh, um, real quick. Uh, so uh, because of the holiday coming up in July, uh, the Ann Arbor event is going to be 7-Eleven. Um, at a 7-Eleven? It's going to be at a 7-Eleven in Ann Arbor. No. Sweet. It's going to be so July 11th because obviously we're not doing an event Play on July 4th. Play whole time. 7. 7-Eleven. Seven yeah. 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 Uh, and then the following week, our event will be at uh, Nancy's downtown again. So it'll be good to be back there. Just so we're clear, not 7-Eleven at Connor O'Neill's. Oh. Thanks for keeping us honest, Randy. Yeah. Thanks for keeping us honest. So uh, on Seven Eleven, not at Seven Eleven. One of the uh, political parties, well, we're not going to name names. Well, we can name names. The GOP. Uh, their data firm that collects basically all the data of all the peoples. Of all the things. Of everyone. Um, roughly 198 million of them, isn't to that, be specific. Isn't that basically every registered voter in the United States? They said it's clo- It's it's something like 75, 78 percent, something like lot. that, if I recall correctly. That's it's lot. nuts. Yeah. The, yeah, they were storing internal documents on a publicly accessible Amazon server. Genius! Like, I don't know what's... How does that even come to play? I mean, you talk about like the U.S. is putting in their uh, a CISO. Hey, hey boss, yeah. boss, we we need we need to put this stuff on a secure server. Well, what's it cost? Well, like ten <laughs> times the amount of the other server. I, I, I think this was actually uh, eh, this don't worry configuration. About it. So they had said that there was one point one terabytes of data that was unsecured, which is roughly ten billion pages of text. Yeah. However, there was another twenty four terabytes of data that had been configured correctly on the same repository. So basically this was somebody effed up and somebody messed up pretty big 
and basically all those records containing birth date, mailing address, oh, yeah, birth phone date, numbers. address, name, phone number, basically your own little identity theft in a box. You like it start was, like a, a war dialer and start calling people uh-huh. based on that number. Hey, did you just it was a war dialer just say, hey, did you know that you were in the data breach <laughs> that the GOP <laughs> let happen? So the thing is, if you're the, mad, press one. So this thing's <laughs> called the data trust. And they've received six point seven million dollars in 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 funding during the RNC during the two thousand sixteen cycle. It was even crazier is like looking at some of those file names in that repository. Like they're working with all of the big name kind of shadow money brokers in Washington for their data. It's they they all share data, they all share money, and it's all collected here at this server. It seems yeah. so. I'm sure the Democrats have one too. I mean, it's this is not necessarily a GOP problem. Oh, no, I'm sure no, it's it probably is. the same one, but they just found this one. <laughs> it, it just hasn't been leaked yet. The Democrats <laughs> keep theirs on Hillary Clinton's <laughs> private email server. Oh, oh shit! Where's the back? <laughs> there we go. No, and we, we we talk we talk weekly how none of us really care. Like you know, there's no one beating down the doors right now in D.C. going, "You leaked my my data." Like you 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 know, because nothing's happened. They I, I don't know how many people know about this yet. I would like be to real. think that a, at least someone that's my – well, all right, we'll jump into that one. You know how people aren't informed. Um, a study went out that pretty much proved everything that I've thought. Um, 98% of college students would give up their friend's personal information. For for what? I mean, is there some kind of reward here maybe? For a free pizza. Oh, snap, dude. <laughs> for a pizza? Uh-huh. I'll help you move, bro. <laughs> for, a, for a pizza. Is it like at least a Jets pizza? Or are we talking like some Papa Jones <laughs> did, or Domino's? Did not specify crack? the kind of did pizza. Did not specify, like, right. Just free pizza. Like if it's like a Little Sleezers or something, you just need to <laughs> So do you get a hot and ready, yeah. you know, that you, you can have like their first name. That's if, it, a- if it's like a Jets, <laughs> all right, you can get like name and address. If it's like a Bigalora, that's right. Then, my DNA. It's cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I'll go rip but some like, of their hair out and hand it to like you. like 98%. Yeah, seriously, 98%. You know, and they did 3,000 people. MIT did. So it's not like it's a small sampling. Oh, yeah. And they said it was... Uh, it's not like it was family feud sampling. Well, you know? but the weird thing is, is that they said, so 94% would still do it if there were no reward. So there's only a 4% delta. And then out of both that 94% and the 98%, they said they figured out that like roughly 6% in there gave like a fake email address. Right. Like they didn't hand over their like their friend's real email address, but still. Well, social engineers are going to have a field day now. Like, hey, what's a password on your admin box? I'm not telling you. Free pizza. Uh, <laughs> so basically what we're learning is that the GOP wanted hundreds of millions of pizzas. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> and maybe they got that. It's kind of like free uh, taco day if the yeah, Tigers the score McNuggets six day, runs or McNuggets. Just following Malcolm on his free food tour. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Maybe these like African princes from like these weird West African countries uh, could basically say, hey – We'll give you a free pizza if you send one hundred fifty dollars by Western Union right yeah, now. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, they'll be the new Nigerian phone scam, email scam. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. <laughs> but if you want to talk about you know like polls and stupid people selling out your friends for a free, oh pizza, mother of God! I um, seriously, seriously, I'm I'm really hoping this is like not true. And I, it's been, and I know it's been verified, and I know they went back and, and double checked it. But I'm still in my head, I'm pretending this is not true. So let's uh, let's let's go down. You asked a question. Where does chocolate milk come from? 7%. 7%. percent of Americans, which equates to 16.4 million people, thinks chocolate milk. Had to make Steve Harvey come. say, show me <laughs> brown, brown cow. Brown cow. <laughs> Ding. Wait, but what about the ones with the black and white spots? Do they make chocolate milk too? It's half and half. That's half. Ah! <laughs> uh, yes. But here's, here's my take. When I read that, I go, wait. So someone's taking the time to do a survey to ask people. There was probably a grant paid to do that survey. Where, where chocolate milk comes from. And then they call. And here's the thing. Like, if somebody calls me, and go, where's chocolate milk come from? Meyer. I think 7%. No, but, <laughs> right. Nestle. I think, no, because I think 7% of people are trolls. And I think there's no way. You know, There's you, no you, way. You'd think that. But if they did a study back in the 90s, the Department of Agriculture – said one in five adults did not know that hamburgers are made from beef. That's 20%. That's like, there are what, seven of us in the room here? That means one of you do not know where hamburgers come from. Where do they come from? Hamburg Donald's. <laughs> well, <laughs> from Hamburg, yes, from Germany. Right? Well, if this was like 80s Burger King, I guess they would be right, though, right? That's and, a kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then another team interviewed a bunch of fourth, fifth, and sixth graders and found that more than half of them didn't know that pickles were cucumbers. 
<laughs> a fourth grader. That's what, nine years old? I don't want to yeah. live on.